Okay, so in this video, I'm gonna be pitting the all new Samsung Galaxy S23 Ultra here against its own sibling, the all new Samsung Galaxy S23 Plus. Let's go ahead and jump in. Now, first things first, in this video, of course, we're not gonna be able to tackle every single difference, but we'll be able to cover at least most or a good chunk of the major differences that you will find between these two devices. Obviously, if you wanna go ahead and take a closer look at the spec sheet, you'll be able to really see the way they differ on every single spot. Anyway, with that being said, let's start off with just the size, right? With the S23 Ultra here, what you have is a 6.8 inches display right here on the front here, as opposed to a 6.6 inches display on the regular Galaxy S23 Plus here. Now, to those of you who prefer, you know, boxier phones, obviously you should go for the S23 Ultra here because it's a boxier phone, you know, squarish corners there. It really digs into your palm there as opposed to the S23 Plus here, which has, you know, slightly softer corner. They kind of round it, right? They don't dig as much in your hands, but still very comfortable and holding. I personally find the S23 Plus to be comfortable to hold despite the fact that it has sharper corners. Now, the next major difference here would be the S Pen. We have a stylus with the Samsung Galaxy S23 Ultra as opposed to the regular S23 Plus, which does not have one. Obviously, you could go ahead and buy a capacitive pencil and be able to click or use this on here, but it won't offer anywhere near the level of features that you would have with the stylus that comes here. But generally, I found that people who have the Ultra model tend not to use the S Pen as much as you would think. Personally, I don't use it as much simply because I have a whole range of tablets and every time I am outside of the house, I have at least one tablet with me, right? So I have my two phones because I carry two phones. I have my two phones and I have a tablet. So anything that need, that requires for me to jot down notes, I'll definitely do that on one of my tablets. Anyways, I digress. So as I mentioned, in terms of design, these two are very, very different. Just by looking at them, you can see one is very boxy and the other one has round corners. S Pen or stylus with one and the other one does not have one. Now, the next thing I want to talk about would be the front displays, right? So on the S23 Plus, what you have is a flat display, the traditional display, what we're used to seeing here, as opposed to what we have on the S23 Ultra, which is different compared to what we had on the S22 Ultra. The display here is not as curved as what you had last year, but still not flat enough to be compared to this guy here. So if you prefer flat displays, you should go for the S23 Plus. Obviously, if you prefer curved displays, you should go for this. And I would actually argue that this could actually satisfy those who prefer flat displays as well, because it's right in the middle. It's not really curved, but it's not really flat. So right in the middle, as if Samsung is trying to please, you know, both parties. Anyways, you do have Gorilla Glass Victus 2 on both displays here. These are unibodies, but you have armor aluminum making the phone, you know, even tougher in combo with that new display material. Of course, you're looking at, you know, pretty robust phones here. They both support high refresh rate at up to 120 Hertz. This one particularly goes from 1 to 120 hertz and this one does support 120 hertz refresh rate. Now let's go ahead and dig a little bit deeper, right? Let's talk quality, right? In terms of PPI here, you have a high pixel density here, right? 500 PPI as opposed to 393 here. In terms of resolution, what you're looking at here is a 1440 by 3088 which pretty much makes it a quad HD plus display as opposed to what you have on the S23 plus here, which is 1080 by 2340. So, you know, full HD plus, but not quad HD. Additionally, they're both IP68 rated, right? So we're talking dust and water resistant, which is very, very good. They also both support HDR10 plus. I'm not sure if I mentioned that already. And peak brightness on either one of these is 1750, which is extremely bright. So in terms of using your phone outside under, under direct sunlight, no issues whatsoever. Now let's go ahead and tackle the cameras. The camera system on the Galaxy S23 Ultra looks very different when compared to that of the regular S23 Plus. But, you know, of course they do share some similarities, especially when you take a look at the camera themselves or the lenses themselves. We're looking at three individual lenses. What you have on the S23 Plus here will be a 50 megapixel for the regular lens, the wide, you have a 10 for the telephoto and a 12 for the ultra wide on the Galaxy S23 Ultra. On the other hand, you have that all new lens, 
200 megapixel for the regular lens of course you have that 10 and also the 12 on the front here they both have been downgraded compared to those of last year last year we looked at 40 megapixel on front facing or the selfie cameras there but now we have 12 megapixels right so a 12 megapixel here and a 12 megapixel here and in terms of quality compared to what was offered last year on the previous one even better so even though they're downgraded in terms of pixels they offer better picture quality compared to last year's, which was actually offering even more pixels. Now they essentially offer essentially the same features, right? You can shoot 8K at 30 frames per second here, which is insane. And you can also do 8K at 30 frames per second here. And in terms of quality, again, they come so close that, I'm just gonna say they come close, but I couldn't tell the difference. They look very much alike. I do know that Samsung did, of course, tout the fact that these are very much improved cameras. But anyway, overall, when we're talking low light situations, the camera is going to be better on the S23 Ultra. Now let's go ahead and quickly tackle some additional physical features here. What you have would be the USB Type-C port, obviously faster data transfer on these guys here. So very good to see. The speakers also improved on the S23 Ultra here, which is a very good thing. And then you have, of course, your power button, volume rocker, mics, all that good stuff. That would be your typical stuff. Now on the inside, we have some major improvements, right? Notably the Qualcomm Snapdragon 8 Gen to made for Galaxy. These things are tailored for these phones here. So they essentially perform the same. I didn't really, I couldn't tell the difference. Obviously you have a larger display here as opposed to here. So you might prefer one over the other, but in terms of just raw performance, I couldn't tell. Obviously if you go to, you know, like a spec sheet or you go to benchmark, you will see, you know, the differences. But in terms of user experience, I could not tell the difference. Now, my unit here, this one is 512 gigs of internal storage. And what I have here is a 256 gigs would be the base. Base here is 256 gigs. Base here also starts at 256 gigs. But what I have is a 512 gigs, which means that it comes with 12 gigs of RAM as opposed to my 256 gigs here with eight gigs of RAM. Even if you were to go for the 512 gigs, you would still keep, you will still get eight gigs of RAM. But anyway, so you have faster RAM, a lot more RAM here. So obviously depending on the situation, this phone here will be better when it makes use of that RAM. Now let's go ahead and talk battery. What you have here is a 5,000 milliamp on the S23 Ultra as opposed to 4,700 milliamp on the Samsung Galaxy S23 Plus. In terms of battery life, I find the S23 Plus to have better battery life than the S23 Ultra. Now they both also do support wireless charge and reverse wireless charge and also fast wire charge at up to 45 watt. Of course, all of this will play based off of how you use your phone or how you use your device. All of that will determine how long your battery lasts. Now I wanna go ahead and stop the video here. We're gonna do a quick recap and then my recommendation, right? So which one should you go for? I personally think that the S23 Plus is not priced where it should be. It's a thousand dollars for $9.99, whatever you want to call it. I personally think it's a phone that should be going for about 900 bucks, not a not, thousand not dollars, you know, at least the way I see it. In terms of battery life, the S23 Plus is definitely better than what you have on the S23 Ultra. Everything else, you know, where we're talking cameras or we're talking display, I would say the S23 Ultra just takes the crown. This is the best phone. I anticipate this is going to be the best phone of the year, the S23 Ultra. So we're essentially matching the S23 Plus against the best phone of the year. If money is not an issue, I would say go for the S23 Ultra. Now, if money is an issue, I would say, you know, try to find some deals on the S23 Plus and go for that. And despite the S23 Plus here being a better phone, they do actually perform about the same, or I should say they actually do offer about the same stuff, right? On a lot, you know, in a lot of areas, not everywhere, but in a lot of areas, they actually offer pretty much the same stuff. But this is the better phone. Anyways, that's just my take on these two phones here. Let me know with your questions or let me know with your take in the comment section. I will catch you in that comment section. Make sure, of course, to share this video if you know anyone who'll be interested. Make sure to like, subscribe if you haven't done so already. I will catch you in the next video. Up until the next video, of course, as always, stay safe out there.